fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's trouble at Sioux City! Hello, Silver! Hello! Sioux City was the wildest, crookedest town in the West. Dodge City had the reputation. That may have been because few people left Sioux City alive. Crompert's Cafe was the biggest place in town, where one could find every type of gambling, all of it crooked. Now, hold on. You've taken me for plenty of cash. Let me borrow from someone, won't you, Crompert? You heard what I said, redhead. Clear out. Yeah, well, I was welcome enough when I had cash. I got a right to try and win back some. You got no rights here. We don't want kids that are wet back of the ears. Vamoose before I have you thrown out. You won't throw me off. No. Oh, take your hands off me. Look here, Crompert, that cash was my pa's savings. I've got to win back some. Uh, Wait, hold on, Crompert. Let me talk. Hey, boys, give me a hand. I want to kick this ratty clear across the porch. <laughs> Why, you... Let him go. Slap me, will you? I'll show Don't you. Don't be a fool, Crompert. You're no fighter with fists. All right, then I'll use a gun. Oh, my wrist. Don't draw a gun in here. You'll get hurt. Where are you? Go on, youngster. Clear out and stay out. Yeah, but Hurry I... up. Yes, sir, I'm going. I'll get you for this, stranger. No man slaps me and gets away with it. Go back to your drinks and gambling tables. Pick up that gun and keep it in leather. Hey. Say, just who are you? That's my affair. Hey, uh, I could use a man like you. How would you like to work for me? I'd sooner starve. Never saw the like of it. Face prompted right down. Hey, did you see the way he slapped his gun hand? And then he let him pick up the gun. Never saw anything like it. Yeah, Crompert even offered him a job. I wonder who the stranger is. Never seen him around here. He ain't Sioux City type. Look at him, sitting in the corner. He's sitting with a redskin. Yes, sir, he's sitting with a redskin. Although every game in this place is crooked, the men who play don't have a chance to win. You see, young red-headed fellow. Him lose plenty cash. I'd like to have made Crompert give it back to him. Why not do that? They'd returned the money and the boy had taken it. Crompert's killers would have had it back before morning. Uh, not right. And the red-headed boy would have been dead. Uh, too bad there isn't some way to get rid of men like Crompert. All of you! Everyone here, listen to me! Who's the old man? <laughs> mm, I don't know. Well, if it ain't old man Hardy, spouting reform talk. I want it known that I'm here without a gun. I'm here to have a showdown with you, Crompert. And if I'm killed, everybody here will know I didn't shoot first. Never mind yelling for the whole county to hear, Hardy. Say what you got to say and get. We don't have anything here that'd interest you. Crumpert, this time you've gone too far. No, no, you don't say so, Hardy. 
That's too bad. <laughs> you just write me a letter and complain about it. I mean it. I haven't been here because it's been useless. But tonight, tonight I saw how you reach out and grab decent people. Decent people. And turn them into rotten wretches like yourself. I don't like that talk, Hardy. You tend to your business and I'll run mine without your help. I don't tell you how to do your job. Tonight my son came here. I don't know who your son is. How do I know who comes my here? My boy's name is Jim. Has red hair. You'll remember him. You took enough cash from him. Oh, that young upstart. <laughs> you ought to teach him how to play games before you let him go out playing with professionals. I don't blame Jim. I blame myself and others like me who've let you settle here and grow rich and do nothing about it. That's why I'm here. Well, now that you're here, what do you figure on doing? To start with, I'm going to take this bottle from here and throw it there. That'll do, Hardy. I'm going to wreck this place. Wreck it. Smash every ounce of raw liquor you've got here. Stop it. Shoot me, Crawford. Go ahead and shoot me. Make yourself a murderer in the eyes of the law. And it'll be an excuse to hang here. Stop him. Grab the crazy fool. Hang on to him. No, I'll get that gambling wheel. He's a fighting fury. Grab him. Hang on to him. He's wrecking my place. I'll get him, boss. Hit him with that bottle. Knock him down. No, you don't. Hardy was a big man, younger than he looked, and goaded by a fury that gave him unthought of strength. He smashed a hard fist into the face of the oncoming bartender. He threw a chair through the mirror back of the bar. He smashed gambling games and tables. Then when Crawford finally grabbed him from behind, the owner of the place felt himself gripped and spun to one side. Out of the way, Crawford. Come on, Tonto. We're in this, too. He's wrecking the place. Leave me alone. Let me at him. Shoot me, Crawford. Shoot me and be a killer. Shoot me and hang. I'll show you. Uh, uh, boss, you hit Lefty. It's Lefty you got. I, I fired that shot in the air. I, I didn't mean to hit Lefty. You, you did it, Hardy. Boys, boys, listen to me. Hardy's the one. He came here with a gun. That's a lie, Crumpert. You gotta back me, boys. Hardy came here shooting. That's a story. He killed Lefty. Hardy killed Lefty. That's right. Hardy did it. It's Hardy that got him. We gotta stand back at Crumpert. Our word again, Hardy. Lynch him. Lynch Hardy. Come on, Hardy. Out of here. Stranger, wait. Get back. All of you stand back. There'll be more shooting in this place. I'll get the stranger. Oh, my hand. Anyone else want to draw a gun? Stop him. Stop him. Stay where you are. Hardy, out of here, Tonno. Get him on silver. I'll ride right back of him. Uh, I don't care about nothing. Quiet. You're needed, Hardy. You come. Out this way. Everyone stay where you are. Don't come through this door. After me, get Hardy. Get Hardy. Give me your breath to Stop him. Come on, get your gun. Ready, Tonno? Uh, Ready, big fella. Get him on scout. Come on, silver. Lone Ranger and Tonto headed for the camp outside of town. In the camp, Hardy was given cool water to drink, and Tonto applied soothing dressings to countless bruises. Then, when the older man was rested, the Lone Ranger stepped into the ring of light from the small campfire with a mask concealing the upper part of his face. Mask? I had a disguise when I was in town, Hardy. Well, you, you look different. Outlaw? No. Well, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters now. I failed. I was a fool to think any scheme like mine would work. You said you were the father of the boy who lost that money. Yes. He left a note telling me what he'd done. He wouldn't face me. I've lost my son. My only son. Lost him? He ran away. Called himself a thief. Branded himself for life. Uh, he'll be an outcast, an outlaw. Like those, those men in Crumbert's place. And it isn't his fault. It's mine. My fault for spending my time with the Indians. I thought you were the missionary. The Indians are willing to listen to me. They're the only ones who will. Well, there's an Indian village north of here. They need you. Need me? Will you go there? It doesn't matter where I go. The Lone Ranger went with Tonto and Hardy to the Indians who lived in a valley far north of Sioux City. Hardy met the chief through Tonto. They like each other, Tonto. See how they're talking? Uh, chief, plenty good Indian. Him want friendship with settler. Him not like Crompert. That chief has had a lot of trouble with the Indians who go to Sioux City and visit Crompert's place. Uh, that right. They come back with whiskey, Crompert sells them. Uh, Indian go to town with plenty fur from trapping. Sell fur, get cash, spend cash in cafe, come back with nothing. Hardy can do a lot of good here, Tonto. They won't get rid of the evil. 
The only way to do that is to change conditions in Sioux City. Not right, Chief. Just a minute. How do you like this village, Hardy? Why, these Indians are sincere. I've been wasting my time in Sioux City. You'll stay here then? I'd like to. There's only one thing. Jim? Yes. We're going to look for him, Hardy. If you're here, we'll know where to find you when we have word. Why should you look for my son? It isn't your worry. I want a man like you with these friends of Tonto. If we try to find Jim, you'll be able to stay here. I'll see you again. <coughs> we ride now. Kuma! Tonto! Kuma! Adios, Hardy. Goodbye. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. In the days that followed, the Lone Ranger and Tonto concentrated on the hunt for Jim Hardy. They picked up his trail after a great deal of effort and followed it to the next town. Hardy. Was he a lad of about 15 or 16 or thereabouts? Yes, with red hair. Why do you want him? His father wants to see him. But you're not his pappy. Who are you? Why are you wearing that there mask? This might identify me. Oh, silver bullet, huh? Now, great day in the morning. You're the Lone Ranger. Well, I'll tell you. That youngster did come through here. He stayed here in the livery stable for a few days, working like all get out. He wanted a horse or pack mule. He wanted to work till he'd earned one. Well, I figured if he stayed much longer, he'd work himself to nothing but skin and bone. So I give him an old sway back and he shoved on. The last to see was heading north. Redhead with the sway back horse? Yeah, he stopped here and worked in my store for a time. Spent three days working hard. He done some repairing to the roof and cleaned the place from front to rear and did no end of other things. Did you pay him? Well, you might say he did, but he didn't want cash. He wanted vittles and spades and mining tools. Now, there ain't much call for mining tools around this part of the country. Not many goes in for mining. But he made up a pack as best he could, loaded her on the sway back, then walked alongside. I want to tell you, mister, it was a sorry-looking outfit when he started on foot, leading the sway back and heading north. Thanks. Uh, but you, who are you and why, why are you asking about him? I'm a friend of his father. The Lone Ranger and Tonto learned that Jim had worked to earn a horse and mining supplies, then left the towns to head into the hills. Following the trail was slow work. Several times, Tonto had to spend hours looking for the familiar marks of Jim's worn boots or the irregular steps of the broken-down horse. The trail led constantly higher into the hills until... Tonto, there's a thread of smoke ahead. I think we're near the end of the trail. Maybe that where Jim make camp? I hope so. Come on, Silver, old fellow. Won't be much farther. Uh, what we do when we find Jim? We need him, Tonto. Need him to smash Crumpert. Hey, you! Where are you going? Not Jim Hardy. Jim, we want you. Keep away from here. I'm on my own now. We came from your father. He wants to see you. I don't want to see him. Oh, come closer. I heard what happened in town. I don't care what you heard. Empire. Stop that shooting. I mean it, mister. I'm not being taken a prisoner. That shot was just a warning. You can't get me. I'm back of a rock. Nevertheless, we're coming after you. You're not going to shoot us. Come on, boy. Keep back, I tell you. Don't come closer, I'll let you have it. Stop where you are. You hear me? Stop! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Shots rang from the rocks above the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Jim Hardy's called out a grim warning. Don't come nearer, I'll let you have it. Stop where you are. You hear me? Stop! Come on, Silver. Steady there, boy. The masked man guided Silver up the last steep incline toward the summit of the rock-strewn hill. Your father sent us, Jim, and we want to tell you where he is. Oh, I know your game. Get back, dog Please. I don't want to kill a man, not even an outlaw. 
Get back. Steady there, Jim. We're not outlaws. Keep away from me. There. I'll take that gun for a while. Don't let me go. Why can't Cropper leave me alone? I'm not hurting him. Jim, do you think we came from Cropper? Where else you come from? That mask. Cropper's gang don't wear masks. You should know that. Crooks don't have to wear masks in Sioux City. Now, I told you I came from your father. That's not true. Pa's dead. Where did you hear that? I got the news. Stayed around the towns near Sioux City long enough to hear about it. Crawford's dirty double-dealing polecat friends lynch my pa. Jim, Jim, you're all wrong. Ah, we come with plenty good news. We fetch true story. Yeah. You mean Pa's alive? Of ah. course he's alive. We can take you to him. You're not from Crawford? No. You didn't trail me to steal my secret? I didn't know you had a secret. Sit down here a minute, Jim. We've got to get a lot of things straightened out. During the next few minutes, the Lone Ranger told Jim just what had happened in Sioux City after the red-headed boy had left the community. Jim realized that in the voice of the soft-spoken masked man, he was hearing the truth. Wait. Jumping Juniper, now I got it. You're the man that helped me get out of there. You slapped his face. Oh, Jumping Juniper, what a fool I was. Now, Jim, tell me about your secret. And I'll tell you how we're going to try and smash Crompert. I'll tell you why I asked your father to make friends with the Indians to the north. Why I'm so anxious to have your help. Well, all there is to it is that... Well, there's been stories of gold in this mountain. Yes, I know. Well, I talked too much when I was in one town, working to earn my horse. I said something about having an inside tip as to where there was gold. Well, I didn't have. I was just talking big, I guess. I thought Crawford was out to steal my secret. And maybe shoot me to get it. Oh, I see. Well, uh, you haven't found gold? Uh, not yet. You won't. But you're going to find something better, Jim. Honor, glory, and happiness. And here's how you'll get it. Dotto, come over here while we lay out our plans. A few days later, Jim returned to the home he had lived in before the trouble. He was seen by several of the townsmen, and people wondered at his gay, happy attitude as he packed a few personal belongings and carried them to a buckboard. Finally, one of Zeke Crompert's friends came up to the house. Oh, hi there. How are you, Dan? Not as cheerful as you seem to be. What's got into you, Hardy? Oh, nothing much. Uh, say, Dan, are you going back into town? Oh, sure I am. Well, I wonder if you'd take this letter to the post office. It's mighty important. Sure thing. Where are you aiming to go? Now, Dan, I'm not saying a thing about my business, Savvy. Oh, all right, I I didn't mean to pry. I wouldn't do to tell what I know. Well, maybe someday I'll let a few friends in on it. We'll see. And don't forget that letter, Dan. It, it means a lot to me. Eh, sure not. I won't forget it. And give Crawford my best. Tell him I'll take care of him someday. Get up there, boy. Get up. Gun of Crumpert, he drove off as if he was a millionaire. That old sway back hauling the buckboard. But you uh, couldn't find out about him? No. I didn't take any stock in it when I heard he was going to prospect. Crumpert, you don't think he really struck something, do you? I don't know. Let me see the letter he gave you. Ah, here it is. Said it was mighty important. It's to an outfit in the East. Hmm. I know that outfit. Hey, now we can't mail it. Who said I intended to mail it? I want to know what's in it. <laughs> oh, hey, says his old man is working with the engines. Is that where he went? Hey, hold on. Maybe we've got a hold of something here, Dan. What's that? The river runs past the place where those redskins live. It's running in a different bend than it used to. Do you know why that river's got a different course than it used to have? No. Dan, listen. We're onto something big, mighty big. Are you savvy what's in this letter? <laughs> oh, I'm no fool. Hey, Crawford, what are you getting at? What about that river? Suppose a long time ago a gold strike was made, but the critter that found it wanted to keep it hidden. Suppose he used a lot of redskins, having them help him dig a new course for the river so it would hide his discovery. Yeah, but what good would the gold do him? Suppose he died and never did get the gold. Then along comes someone else. Go on. Go on, Crumpert. The Indians have got that land now. Would the gold belong to them or to whoever finds it? I don't know. <laughs> Imagine that fool writing to ask what the law says on a situation of that sort. Oh, I got it all straight. Old man Hardy found out about the gold. He wants to make sure where he stands before he touches it, see? I got it. Well, we'll beat him to it. 
We'll put that river back where it belongs before he gets the Redskins to do it. Now call all my friends together. I'm forming a company, and those that want part of it can fight. They can fight the Redskins. How many others want to take the chance? Some of us might get shot down. Yeah, but some of us will get rich. I'm with you. The more we get, the less chance there is of being shot. We'll lick the Redskins. We'll drive them out. We'll get Hardy, too. Yeah, I still want Hardy hanging on a rope. <laughs> Jim drove slowly toward the north, then camped at night, and on the second day continued the pace that was suited to the old horse that pulled his buckboard. Then toward sunset, he heard horsemen coming from behind. Oh, it's a lone ranger. Oh, go up there, boy. Oh, Silver, steady, go, Silver. Oh, You been in Sioux City? Yes, and everything's in a turmoil. No, is that so? Kind of looked over the land while I investigated the people. Combert is forming an army. He's getting together tools and wagons, horses and men. And they're going to head north. Will I get to Pa before they get there? Yes, we'll ride on ahead and tell your father you're coming. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. Crawford had his army ready. Almost every man in town was with him. Outlaws and gamblers of every description. They packed tools, gunpowder, and additional weapons into wagons, then mounted their horses and waited for the signal to start. Crawford's place was closed, as were all the other cafes and gambling houses. Sioux City was abandoned for the time, so the men could take war to the Indians and drive them from their valley in the hills. Come on, boys. The sooner we get there, the sooner we'll be rich. Get up there. Come on there. Jim reached the Indians and his father. Uh, Jim, I'd given up hope of ever seeing you again. Pa, I've got lots coming to me, but... Well, that can wait. There's something more important to be done. Yes, sir. The Lone Ranger's here. He told me. Jim, there isn't any time to lose. Well, just tell what you want done. I know signaling from the next hill that Comfort's men are coming. They'll be here soon after dark. Are they that close? Yes. I know he's left his post and he's on his way here. We've got to get these Indians out of the valley. Tell the chiefs they must move, not defend their valley. I'll tell the chief. Well, where can they go? I don't told your father of another valley to the west. They can go there. It won't be for long. Then they can come back. <laughs> Indian drums sounded the message through the hills. Hunters returned as fast as their ponies would bring them. Wigwams were knocked down, packed and loaded, and in an incredibly short time, the red men were ready to move. In the meantime, Tonto arrived. Sunset, Tonto. Indians are moving out already. Uh, Indian like Hardy. That's crude by the way the chief listens to him. Chief believe all Hardy tell him. Yes. Now there's Jim. Jim, get your horse. We're moving now. After dark, Sioux City crooks arrive. <laughs> yeah, this beats all. The Redskins heard us coming and cleared out. <laughs> he shows that they're scared of us. Yeah, we got to place without so much as firing a single shot. Yeah. This is the best yet. Now we'll all share in the cold. Well, what's the use of wasting time? Dan, you take six men and post guards. The rest of you come with me. I'll show you where to start digging. Or well, you men in the wagons follow along with the blasting powder. Come on, get up there. Get up there. There's the stream we've got to move. Steady, boy. Whoa, there. Whoa, steady. Right there's where we've got to change that course. Yeah, sure of it, Crumper? <laughs> Here's what'll make you howl. <laughs> I found the whole thing diagrammed in Jim Hardy's letter. <laughs> look, look yonder. You see where the moon falls in that arroyo? Well, that's where the water used to run. If we work fast and dig right, it'll be there again by sunrise. Now dig! Come on, you boys, dig! That's it, come on there! On the blasts were fired. The river gushed and geysered, then settled into a new course, rushing down a different side of the hill. We did it! We did it, boys! Hey! 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 As soon as they could, the men began to dig where the river had been. They worked feverishly at first, then more slowly as exhaustion overcame them. After the first day of digging, they went at the job more methodically, working in shifts. Hunger assailed them because no one wanted to leave the place to hunt for food. Hard labor was unknown to these men, and their muscles cried out in torment, but they kept on, lured by promise of great wealth. 
Day after day they worked, sleeping as little as possible until a week had passed. Then an old man arrived. You come from Sioux City? Fools! Fools, all of you! There is no Sioux City. What's this I hear about you coming from the city? Crumpet, you've been fooled. What? Look it up yonder on that hill. Those men have been watching you for some time, laughing, I'll bet. That's Jim Hardy, his father, the Lone Ranger, and Tondo, and some of the Indians have moved to beyond the next hill. What are you talking about? What's that about Sioux City? When you put the river back where it used to be, you restored Apache Lake in the basin where Sioux City was. What? The water started rising, kept rising. Them of us that was left, too old to ride with you, went to the only place that stayed above water, the hill where Hardy lived. We're in his house now. We found the whole thing written out for us. The Lone Ranger planned it all. The Lone Ranger that... There's no gold here, never was. It was arranged to let Jim and to let Dan have that letter, known to be read and not mailed. My cafe. Underwater. My place. Underwater. It was all washed out. Only place left is an island with Hardy's house on it. Trumpet, you were so doggone smart, you washed out your own town. All that's left for you is this, wrapped in the letter we found in Hardy's house. Bullet. A silver one. A present from the Lone Ranger. My advice is to stop digging gold and try to find some place where you can live without starving. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 